as somebody who's new to training for a marathon is I want to take out as many variables as I can. So if I find a shoe, yeah, I just want to be great. Yeah, I just want to be great. Yeah, I just want to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt. Now on this channel I try to share with you the things that I'm doing to be the best that I can be for the most important thing in my life, which is my family. That's a pretty good shoe. And yes, that was a video of my son. And yes, he was wearing my Triumph 19, Saucony Triumph 19 shoes. And yes, I did set that up a little bit, but he loves to get involved in some of my videos and I just thought it would be a little bit cute. So there you have it. Uh, what I did want to talk about today is this shoe, the Saucony Triumph 19, and why I feel like it was the perfect shoe for me in my daily miles and why I agree with a lot of what Seth James Damore said. I consider myself part of that DGR family and I love watching his videos. And actually what I'd like to do is just put a list of different YouTubers up there right now that do some really solid quality shoe reviews. There are two main ones that I do watch. That would be Seth James Damore and Kofuzi, but there are a number of other YouTubers out there who are putting out really quality shoe review content. And if you're a runner, whether you're new or you're very experienced, I think obviously one of the most important things that you need to get right is your shoes. And yes, you can go to a shoe shop, you can get fitted. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. That's probably the number one step, but also narrowing down that search is getting some good shoe reviews in and getting some honest advice or honest opinions from some people online is really, really important. And that's what I wanna to give to you on this shoe and why I mostly agree with what Seth said. Now, right off the bat, I will say, when I started watching Seth's video, one of the things that kind of made me nervous was that he, he gave this shoe a relegation score, uh, meaning that he didn't get to 50 miles. Pull out the relegation whistle by three miles. I'm frankly done. Now for me, uh, that worried me a little bit, but after you watch the video and you pay attention to all the things that he says, there are a couple of key points that kind of make that happen. And it comes down to, in terms of him just not loving the shoe, and it comes down to a couple of different things. A, the weight. The weight's one of the biggest things. Now, Seth is very, very strong. He has a very strong opinion about the weight of the shoe. And whether you're, whatever that weight should be, if it's a daily trainer or it's a racing shoe, uh, heavier shoes, he's not a big fan of. And that way you can get a very, very low score. But also I think the price, I think he feels that given the weight, if the price was just a little bit lower, it, uh, it would serve you as, as a better shoe, might get a little bit higher score. But I do think it is important to talk about the weight. And in fact, uh, we are looking at 356 grams. Now, why is that really important to me is that I wear a size 13 shoe. So right off the bat, when I walk into the shoe store, when they ask me, when I walk into the running store and they ask me what exactly I needed in a shoe, I said I was worried about the weight that I thought, you know, I've already got, I've got a size 13 foot on me. That's the size running shoe I need. So if it's gonna, I really gotta worry about the weight of the shoe because I know I'm not gonna get anything light. I wanna make it as light as possible. And actually, in fact, compared to the other shoe that I've talked about in a couple other videos, the Endorphin Speed, Triumph 19 is almost 100 grams heavier in my size 13. So why does that work for me? Well, it works for a number of reasons. First of all, this is a fairly high cushion shoe. Now, as a new max cushion shoe, but as it's a neutral trainer, but it's got a lot of cushion in it. Is it the softest shoe in the world? No. Is it the bounciest shoe in the world? No. But again, for me, as somebody who's new, as somebody who's looking to run his first ever marathon, what I'm looking for in a long shoe is not something that is too soft, and not soft, something that's so soft that it makes it unstable, I want something like the Triumph 19 that has a very solid heel counter, still has some energy return. In fact, one of the things that uh, Seth mentions in terms of the Triumph 19 outsole is this decoupled groove on the bottom. Not as deep as some other shoes like the Nova Blast, as he mentions in his video, but it does give it a little bit of bounce. And there is a decent return in this midsole. So it's not 
It's not a flat shoe. It's not gonna soak up all that energy and not give you any return. It still gives you that. It just doesn't encourage you to go fast, but I don't wanna go fast. If anything, when I throw the, uh, just trying to put a few kilometers, a few miles on the endorphin speeds that I got, when I throw those on, if I take the endorphin speeds out for an easy run, I find myself running faster than I should for that run. And when I put on the Triumph 19, it sounds silly, but it keeps me going as slow as, as I should go for that run. And that's really important to me as a new runner. All right, so if you are new to my channel and this is one of my first videos that you've seen, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Every new subscriber helps me out so, so much. It encourages me to share more of my content with you and head on over to my channel. And if you think there's some other videos there you might get some value out of, make sure to give them a thumbs up as well. Let's get back to the video and talking about the Triumph 19. Now, the other thing that kind of gets docked score-wise is the price of the Saucony. Triumph 19 because it is a fairly expensive shoe in Canadian dollars. I'll put the American up there, but if you buy this new, if you're not getting it at any sort of a discount, you are looking at $199.99 Canadian. That's a $200 Canadian shoe, uh, which is kind of pricey. But one of the things that Seth mentions in his videos, he says that this is, maybe I already mentioned this already, but this is built like a tank. It's built like a tank. There's the tank running across your screen right now. And one of the main reasons why he says that is that this is built to go the kilometers. He thinks that this shoe will go almost a thousand kilometers, if not more, just a little bit below that. I think 600 miles is what he rated it at. But if I look at the outsole of this shoe and I'll try to remember to look up how many kilometers I actually have on this shoe so far, maybe get a better picture for you, but it's in incredible shape. It's barely worn down at all. There's no creasing in the outsole or in the midsole. None of that has happened so far. So I'm pretty sure he's right on that. This is built like a tank. So when you consider that, when you consider that you're gonna get a ton of miles on this shoe, it's a winner for me. It's exactly kind of what I wanted to shoe. One of the things as somebody who's new to running, as somebody who's new to training for a marathon is I wanna take out as many variables as I can. So if I find a shoe that works for me, that I'm not getting any foot issues in, I don't wanna change out that shoe any sooner than I have to. And if I can find a shoe that's built like a tank that does exactly what I need it to do, I wanna stick with that shoe and I have found that in the Triumph 19. So we've talked about the outsole, we've talked about the midsole, having decent energy return, not great, but decent. But I wanna talk about the upper for a little bit because also one of the things when I was looking at a shoe like this, I'm always worried about the upper just not being breathable. You're talking about a shoe that maybe, you, when you think about a race shoe, you think about it as light as possible. So that might worry you a bit with the Triumph 19, but it does come with a engineered mono mesh. It actually seems like a, a similar, similar in a lot of ways to what the Endorphin Speed comes with. It is very breathable. Uh, it does have a semi-gusseted tongue included in this, so you get a nice snug fit. There is padding around the collar of this, but it's not overly padded. It's not like you're getting an insane amount of padding that's gonna make that super, super hot. And uh, the tongue also a lot of padding, but not anything that's too severe, not over the top, kind of, kind of just in the middle for me. And the laces, now the laces are incredibly padded, but I think, and Seth mentions in his video, again, I, I keep going back to Seth, but I consider him to be one of the authorities on uh, shoe reviews and, and giving good quality information. Uh, he thinks that these padded laces really, really add to help with the lockdown on the shoe, and I'd agree with him. Obviously, even when you're thinking about laces, big, thick laces just adds to the weight again, but, uh, but it's not over the top. And also, you know, one of the things that I want to say about weight, and I know I talk about that a lot because that's always something that they mention with this shoe, the Triumph line has always been considered to be a fairly heavy shoe is that this shoe is actually quite a bit lighter, I think maybe almost a full ounce lighter than the Triumph 18. So uh, they, they have done a lot to it, and I think the Triumph 20 that's coming up here in the fall, they may have shaved an extra ounce off that. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, another full ounce off that shoe. So they're definitely moving in the right direction. But if it were me, and I was looking for a reliable, dependable shoe that I could get a ton of miles in. 
I would certainly consider the Triumph 19 as that shoe. Thank you for watching my video. My name is Matt and this is what matters to Matt and ultimately what matters to me most is my family and I will see you in the next one.